in this lecture we study a little bit more about the vertex and fragment shaders and see how the OpenGL shading language controls the functionality of these shaders. A quick overview of the GLSL which is the OpenGL shading language. It is part of OpenGL 2.0 onwards. It is a high level C like language. It has new data types that are provided within the language itself such as matrices and vectors and it has become part of OpenGL 3.1 uh, where we have to explicitly write the shader programs and there are no default shader programs provided uh, with OpenGL anymore. So he here we have the rendering pipeline again. So where exactly does the vertex and fragment shaders lie on this pipeline? As shown here, the vertex pro processor is where the vertex shader lies and fragment processor is where the fragment shader lies. The application program sits here and the output of the pipeline is pixels that are displayed on the screen. The goal of the vertex shader is to provide the final transformation of mesh vertices to the rendering pipeline. Here the 3D information is still preserved. The goal of the fragment shader is to provide the color to each pixel and decide which pixels get displayed and at which location of the screen. When we are writing the vertex shader and the fragment shader programs, basically we are writing programs to control the vertex processor and the sh uh, fragment processor respectively. Here are some data types in the shaders. They are C-like data types such as int, float and boolean and we have vectors as well in addition. Each element of these vectors is a float. We can have integer vectors and they will start with an i indicating that these are not floats but integers or booleans with a b. We can have matrices with mat2, mat3 and mat4. These are basically 2x2, two 3x3 two, three three and 4x4 four four matrices which are stored by columns. We can use standard referencing such as if m is a matrix we give in square brackets the row number and then in the next square bracket the column number to reference a particular element of the matrix. We have C++ style constructors such as vec2a is equal to vec2 3.0, 2.0 which will put these two elements in this two dimensional vector and we can reuse vec2 to define vec3 and store it in another variable. So these are basically standard C++ style constructors. So when you talk about C programming or C-like programming, the discussion of pointers always comes in. Well, there are no pointers in GLSL. We can use C structs which can be copied back from functions, but there are no pointers as such in GLSL. Because matrices and vectors are basic types, they can be passed into and out from the GLSL functions such as mat3func mat3a. So here we are passing uh, parameters as matrix uh, 3a to a function which returns matrix 3. A type qualifier is used in OpenGL shading language or GLSL to modify the storage or behavior of global and locally defined variables. These qualifiers change particular aspects of the variable such as where they get their data from and so forth. We have these in Java as well. However, in Java they are known as modifiers rather than qualifiers. Some examples in Java are private, public, protected which are access control modifiers. In GLSL these qualifiers are same as C or C++. However, we need some other qualifiers due to the nature of the rendering pipeline. Hence qualifiers that can be used in OpenGL shading language include attributes uniform varying which are storage qualifiers to store data and precision qualifiers such as high precision, medium and low precision and parameter qualifiers such as in and out. We consider variables that can change once per primitive or per vertex or per fragment at any time in the application. 
vertex attributes are interpolated by the raster riser to fragment uh, into the fragment attributes we have the next two lectures on explaining storage qualifiers and precision and parameter qualifiers <laughs>